Yng Nghymru, mae gennym gynlluniau uchel geisiol i greu coedwig genedlaethol a fydd yn rhedeg ar ledled o wlad trwy ecosystem gysylltiedig o goetiroedd hynafol a rhai newydd. Bydd y goedwig genedlaethol i Gymru yn perthyn i bob un ohonom ac o fydd un i gyd. Ein un ni fydd hi w chreu, ein un ni fydd hi w meithryn, ein un ni fydd hi w choleddu am flynyddoedd i ddod. Bydd yn amddiffyn ein gwlad ac yn rhoi ffordd fwy cynaliadwy o fyw a gyfer cenedlaethau'r dyfodol. Dyma'ch coedwig genedlaethol, byddwch yn rhan ohono. In Wales, we have ambitious plans to create a national forest which will run the length and breadth of the country through a connected ecosystem of ancient and new woodlands. The National Forest for Wales will belong to and benefit us all. It will be ours to create. It will be ours to cultivate. It will be ours to cherish for years to come. It will protect our country and provide a more sustainable way of life for our future generations. This is your National Forest. Be part of it. Mae, bore da chi croeso mawr y chiwythgws ar gyfer y drydedd yr dynol ola i drafod coedwig genedlaethol i Gymru ac i glywed eich safbwyntiau, cwestiynau a cheisiau chi. Good morning to you. My name is Chris, Chris Jones on a windy morning and as White Snick once sung in 1982, here I go again. So welcome to the third and the final day of this special event on the National Forest for Wales and to hear your views, of course, your voices this is the penultimate of six sessions that we've been running on Wednesday, Thursday, and today, uh, and today, of course, and doing so today this afternoon. And again, we do have a wide range of people from all fields in this virtual room. I'm sure. Excuse me, that most of you are aware that the First Minister, Mark Drakeford, announced his intention to develop a national forest for Wales in his manifesto commitments in 2018. And of course, 12th of March last year, 2020, the First Minister officially launched the National Forest Programme. So, in a slight change of plans, let's have our keynote address for this morning, please. Neges ar bennig gan lywodraeth Cymru fel rhywbeth o groeso i'r sesiwn fyreolma. Please welcome live for the opening keynote address and then into his presentation, the Head of Forestry Reform at Welsh Government, John Travis. John. Dio Chris, Borodar Paub, good morning and um, let me add my welcome to you all uh, to this morning's National Forest, Your Voice, Your Views um, and the last day of our event this week. Um, my name is John Travis, I'm the Head of Forestry Reform at the Welsh Government. Um, and I just wanted to start today by saying a few words about the overall National Forest Programme and where we are in it. Um, if you've been with us all week and you're very keen, this may be the, the fifth time you're hearing this, uh, but do bear with me for a few minutes for the benefit of those joining us for the first time today. Um, so we're uh, um, almost exactly a year into the National Forest Programme um, and what is a, a very long-term programme uh, seeking to create uh, a, a long-term asset for Wales. And over this first year, um, we focused on um, generating ideas and also starting activity on the ground with some demonstrator projects, um, including um, a fund to support the creation of community woodlands across Wales, um, planting some tiny forests in Wales, and a scheme to support um, capacity building in the forestry sector. And we've also uh, designated our first 14 exemplar national forest sites um, across Wales. And in the coming year, um, we're looking to build on that. Um, we will extend the opportunity for um, woodlands beyond the Welsh Government estate to be awarded national forest status, um, to recognise the, the time and effort people put into managing um, some of our great woodlands in Wales as places for people to visit and for nature to flourish. We'll be looking, uh, for example, our woodlands already capable of demonstrating the national forest outcomes that we're going to discuss today. But we also know that there will be uh, some woodlands uh, that won't quite meet these outcomes now, but would like to be part of the National Forest in the future. 
So we plan to make uh, funding available this year to improve those woodlands to meet national forest standards. So today's session uh, will focus on the theme of trees and the environment, which is obviously um, a really uh, crucial theme. Uh, climate change and the climate emergency and also the, the crisis facing nature are, are key issues uh, for Welsh Government right now. And we believe that trees that are, are well chosen and planted in the right place have enormous potential to help in those areas. So this afternoon, uh, we'll be hearing some short, short presentations from colleagues in um, NRW from Aberystwyth University and here at the Welsh Government who can share their thoughts and experiences in this area and what they think trees can do for the environment. Uh, but we're conscious that the National Forest um, uh, will require input, input from people across Wales and our real priority today is to hear your views. Uh, so the presentations will be short to allow plenty of time for you um, to share your thoughts. And we hope um, that this is a discussion that, that you can enjoy and we'd like to thank all of those uh, who've joined us over the week and joining us today um, and all of our speakers as well for the session and the others have made, that have made this week um, so uh, enjoyable and informative so far. Um, so um, as Chris said, the National Forest um, was launched this time last year and the um, Ambition is to create a network of high quality woodland, which extends the length and breadth of Wales. Um, and a network of woodland which delivers the many benefits that we know uh, can come from woodlands, both through uh, planting new areas of woodland and new trees, and also through um, restoring existing woodlands. Um, and those benefits will include uh, improving the environment and helping tackle climate change, uh, improving the health and well-being of people who enjoy woodlands, and also uh, supporting our economy here in Wales. Um, yeah, in terms of what we see the National Forest looking like, well, at a local level, um, the National Forest will be made up of, as I've said, new woodlands and also our existing woodlands uh, in both urban and rural areas. And we see it being a mix of, as I said, public woodlands uh, on the Welsh Government estate, but also uh, woodlands owned by others. At a regional level, we want it to be uh, connected over time into a connected network across Wales. At a, a national level, uh, it will be a long-term programme which we hope will form a Wales-wide asset in a similar way to something like the Wales Coast Path does. And globally, uh, we want the National Forest to be something which attracts people to Wales and helps Wales play its role in tackling climate change. If we can move to the next slide, please. Um, as I said, uh, creating a national forest will involve people throughout Wales. And one of the ways we've been encouraging people to get involved this week is through the People's Collection for Wales. Uh, so the People's Collection uh, seeks to preserve and celebrate the history of Wales uh, by collecting unique stories from everyday people. And they've opened uh, this week a national forest collection to capture people's memories and feelings about woodlands in Wales. Uh, so if you haven't already, uh, we'd encourage you to visit that uh, take a look at what's in the collection so far um, and add your memories, whether that's through pictures or, or films or poetry or something else. Um, there's a link on the slide there that you can see or just search online for People's Collection Wales and you'll find it. Um, next slide, please. So I've talked about what the National Forest will be and now just briefly to touch on, on how we want to get there. Um, over the last year, with input from lots of people across Wales, we've identified six outcomes that were focused on the National Forest delivering. Uh, so we want the National Forest to be a uh, good quality, well-designed, managed and resilient woodlands uh, which make up the National Forest. Uh, we want those woodlands to be accessible to people and we want to encourage people to um, engage with and enjoy the woodlands. Uh, we want communities uh, to be involved in the woodlands in lots of different ways. We want um, the woodlands to be connected over time uh, with all the benefits that that can bring for biodiversity and for people. Uh, we want dynamic uh, multi-purpose woodlands and trees that deliver a range of benefits. And finally, we want woodlands that demonstrate learning and take advantage and contribute to the latest research and innovation. If we go to the next slide, please. So I said earlier that last, that last year we named our first uh, 14 National Forest Exemplar sites across the country. And this map shows uh, where they are in Wales. 
Um, and these are all brilliant woodlands that meet those national forest outcomes that I've talked about. And as I say, over the next year, uh, we'll be opening applications up for uh, non-Welsh Government woodlands um, so that they can apply to be part of the national forest and making funding available to help those woodlands achieve national forest standard where they don't already. And um, our community woodland scheme uh, will also remain open for applications next financial year um, and will continue to support um, community woodlands uh, to develop and, and to establish. But later this year, we also want to consult on a longer term delivery plan for the National Forest. And, and that consultation will seek views on, on how we can deliver that connected woodland over time. And this week, we've tried to, to start some of that conversation um, and particularly highlighting uh, three possible strategic approaches to the National Forest, which I'll share with you briefly now. If we go to the next slide, please. Uh, so these, these three pro approaches are, are sort of high level, but look at how we could uh, uh, seek to create that connected um, uh, woodland over time. And the first of them is, is a simple uh, north to south approach where we look for opportunities uh, to join up our existing uh, national forest sites and other ancient woodlands in a um, more or less direct route across Wales. If we go to the next slide, please. Uh, the second is, is a similar approach in some ways, uh, but seeking to uh, establish a circular route and, and bring in um, some of the coastal areas of Wales um, and establish that, that circular route of well-managed woodlands, possibly not all canopy cover, but a connected ecosystem across Wales. Uh, next slide, please. And the third alternative is what we call a hub and spoke approach. Um, and that would build upon the area statements developed by Natural Resources Wales, uh, which identify opportunities for each area of Wales to improve their environment. And using the exemplar national forest sites um, and other woodlands as hubs, uh, we'd seek to connect those over time informed and shaped by uh, the local communities and landowners in each place. So we're interested in your views on this approach and this week, as I say, is really the start of that conversation, uh, which will build up to our consultation later this year. Um, so I look forward to hearing what you've got to say in the rest of the event this morning. Diochen Bauer. Diochen thank you, John. Thank you so much. Uh, very impressed. All credit to you. You handled that really well. Thank you so much for stepping in at such short notice this morning with the keynote address and then faultlessly, seamlessly, John, going on to your presentations. Thank you so, so much. Right. Don't forget, if you are um, Twitter fans, there is a hashtag. So it's a uh, hashtag National Forest Wales. And uh, Gamaya Guthkus, hashtag Koiduig Genedlethal Cymria Guthkus, when I go to Ibao, I am Dredar and Gamaya Ak and Assist Next. So please put some photographs up or comments on the on the, the Twitter and use that on the Twitter. So like my mother and, and use that um, hashtag as well, okay, in either Welsh or in English. Vechi, Bessid on Blaine any heavy, what's in store for us? Well, forgive me if you've heard this message before, either yesterday or Wednesday, you might have been with us all week. The aim of the event, of course, is twofold, to focus on the views of the people of Wales on the development of the National Forest, the people of Wales being you, whilst also exploring the, the benefits of woodlands and trees in general for all, demonstrating how valuable trees, of course, actually are from a social, economic and environmental perspective. And so over the course of the three days, we've had the theme sessions lined up focusing on these benefits and they are called, funnily enough, trees and communities, trees and the economy and trees for the environment, which is what we're focusing on this morning. Now, my dear Femath goes with the call Salu, Dwi Waith, and a start a trisier, and a start Amseroi Guahanol, Akia Hiogi, give it a fobble, a fossil Guelno, a Hidjoch Ibab, Siweri Board, and Kemeditan Hidden Hin. All three themes have been delivered twice during the course of the event and at different times to enable as many as possible to have access to them. Now, for each of these sessions, there are three parts, tree run, tie run, run in part one, which is where we are now, of course, an information sharing session with updates on Welsh government policy and showcase item. We've heard from John there, which will be using this Zoom webinar link. The he session run you with border, the one with the one our project. Run die, part two. Well, this will be a discussion session and we'll be accessing that through the Zoom meeting link that you'll all receive in the breakout conversation room. Don't panic, we'll tell you more about that 
in a second. Our hand tree part three, a panel Q&A, which I'll be facilitating later on. I think it's just before midday when we reconvene here in the webinar. I'm hoping that you'll have some questions. We've had some wonderful questions uh, yesterday and the day before for the panel. So please use the Q&A facility here on Zoom as much as you can. He's session Holly Ag Abder Ag Ector, because when I grow so, I hear a question and a gumai. Go with a Vina question and a gumai. A good guess, Manawe Boreth Amin Sharad, we're near their biographies of the contributors and the synopses of their various sessions in the showcase rooms. There's also a room above the QA where you can find biographies of our panelists. So feel free to browse these rooms when you can. Now, the main room here is being recorded. Am I checking? Yes, it is being recorded, as will the Q&A session later on, but the breakout discussion groups won't be recorded. And I'll, I'll tell you for why in a second. Okay, so Eventbox is a superb platform, of course, and it's very easy to navigate. However, again, you might need support regarding any of this. You might get stuck somewhere in the ether. Please don't panic, don't delay. Go back to the lobby of Eventbox. Lobby is the, the go-to word. Um, if you really do get stuck, there is an email address, of, of course. Um, it's info at eventbox.wales. And Eventbox is, of course, event, B-O-C-S, box and a gamag. So that's info at eventbox.wales. Adam is our resident technical expert. He set all this up. And uh, again, he'll help you if he possibly can. Right, Mount Iliad in Emily Orlando are three projects, Emily Roy, Sonia Archie, or Vartha Weiss, Emily Maline, and Hino Breen. In a second, we'll have today three showcases for you, and uh, they'll be illustrating the work that's currently happening. Don't forget that Twitter hashtag. Again, it's, uh, well, let me just get it right. It's uh, hashtag National Forest Wales, Nain and Gamaika, of course, hashtag Coidwig Genadlethal Curry. So, our three special individual showcases. And Gunta, first we have Mr. Jeff Hobbs in a pre-recorded presentation. Jeff is from Natural Resources Wales, Cabot Material Cymru, and well, according to his bio, he's happiest in the woodland with his kids or using a chainsaw to undertake management, hopefully not at the same time, Jeff. So we have a pre-recorded message from Mr. Jeff Hobbs from Natural Resources Wales. Adam. There's something magical about forests. At one with nature, they're good for our soul. We feel not alone, not lost, but connected. Connected to our Celtic past and tales from the Mabinogion. Forests enrich our lives in so many ways. The National Forest for Wales will connect our ancient and the woodlands bringing our past and present culture to life, celebrating Wales as a land enriched by our woodlands. The plan isn't simply to plant a forest, it's to plant an idea and watch it grow for generations. YOLO provided the call of action to get involved in our national forest. And what is important about the message in the video was the focus on the outcome or the vision of our national forest. And with the focus on the outcomes, we can take the focus away from meeting individual outputs and can also ensure that we reduce the risk of perverse outcomes. And in order to do this, you need to use a collaborative, co-productive way of working, which complements the approach taken by area statements. So I'll discuss how area statements can help shape the national forest and help understand what our national forest means. We know that the national forest will evolve and the role it will play and the form it takes will be different in each part of Wales. For example, there are seven area statements in Wales. Each reflects the place and each highlights the role the natural environment plays in addressing opportunities and challenges in those areas. I'm going to discuss South Central Wales. It's the smallest area covering only 6% of Wales, but it is called home to almost 30% of the population. Our national forest can play a pivotal role in contributing to opportunities and challenges in South Central Wales. Area statements will play a significant role in setting out what are strong and sustainable landscapes and adapt and mitigate the climate emergency. Through our place-based working and engagement, 
we've considered the opportunities and challenges for South Central and identified five themes which focus on bridging the urban and our natural environments. Our national forests can share these outcomes to deliver cost-effective, long-term nature-based solutions that benefit health by having regard to area statements. For example, well-managed existing and new woodlands located in and around our urban locations provide the best opportunities for recreation and improving air quality. In the valleys area, our national forests can contribute to protection from hazards such as flooding and wildfire, but also enhancing mental and physical well-being. It is also key that we're able to connect local people to the natural environment and schemes like our national forest will help with this, but it will also ensure that decision makers are able to take the environment into, into account. Area statements contribute to a common evidence base of a suite of groundbreaking legis legislation that links well-being, planning and the natural environment. Ensuring the mechanisms already exist for our national forest to be the, the heart of decision making in Wales. Restore, enhance, create, connect. This vision for our national forest complements the South Central Area Statement where we have put ecosystem resilience at its core. We are not only facing a climate emergency, but also a nature emergency. And we have started developing ecosystem summaries with partners to create a shared understanding of what we mean by ecosystem resilience. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the South Central Wales Woodland Ecosystem Summary. The summary is available online in a story map format. It's a working draft and we welcome your comments. This summary provides an overview of the woodland ecosystem. We have some of the best, most biodiverse woodlands in, so in Wales, in South Central. However, the extent of the woodlands being managed for nature conservation and to benefit ecosystem resilience outside of areas managed to UK forestry standard is unknown. As in the rest of the UK, some of the main pressures affecting woodlands in South Central Wales are climate change, invasive non-native species, pollution and land use practices. In South Central Wales, there is also increased conflict as much of the woodland ecosystem is under pressure from the proximity to the urban environment and associated antisocial behaviour. And in the South Wales Valleys, we have increasing issue with respect to the impact of wildfires. It's not all bad and its proximity to people is also an advantage and something special for our national forest. The National Forest has an important role for building ecosystem resilience and the ecosystem summaries provide a framework for the vision of the National Forest to guide where the National Forest can restore, enhance and create woodlands in a connected way while building ecosystem resilience. This is a woodland habitat network map which shows that native woodland connectivity is quite good in many areas of South Central Wales with extensive networks flowing from the north of the area. Essentially following the Taff Valleys to the extensive wooded areas just north of Cardiff. Other good networks flow east to west, north of the M4, with some key European and nationally important sites within these corridors. Connectivity, however, is much poorer in more lowland areas, such as the Vale of Glamorgan, where woods are more fragmented and effectively form islands in urban and agricultural landscapes. When describing the vision for our national forest, YOLO highlights that we must also restore, enhance and create other habitats in a connected way throughout Wales. This is an important point. The good native woodland connectivity we see here in areas of South, South Central Wales reflects a relatively high proportion of other semi-natural habitats, as well as woodlands in these areas. Some species need a mixture of habitat types, and many species are able to move through other semi-natural habitats between existing woodlands. This combination of habitats in the landscape is important in planning actions to improve habitat and species connectivity. It should be noted that inappropriate tree planting can reduce the resilience of other habitats and even woodlands, resulting in unintended consequences and reduced or adverse outcomes. Our national forest, in order to enhance woodland ecosystem resilience, must also enhance the complementary natural habitat, which are identified and described in more detail in the accompanying ecosystem summaries for South Central Wales. Ecosystem resilience, as set out in the ecosystem summaries, contributes to strong, sustainable landscapes. But to be able to protect our country from climate change, we need to understand the benefits we get from the natural environment. Not only that, but the year statements seek to set out where nature-based solutions can address some of our biggest challenges.
Ecosystem profiles currently under development will set out the benefits that we get from the woodland ecosystem and will help identify where woodland provides important benefits, such as timber, water regulation, air filtration, carbon sequestration to local communities. Indeed, woodland creation could be targeted to deliver some of the benefits needed by local communities to improve health, combat poor air quality and work with our water environment. There are often synergies and trade-offs associated with the management of woodland and is an aspiration that national forest sites will meet the UK forestry standard, which promotes sustainable forest management. This means seeking to achieve a balance between environmental, social and economic outcomes. However, there is flexibility in this standard and management objectives for any given area of woodland will determine the relative importance of each. Area statement will provide support in setting those local objectives. The area statement will help tell you what outcome is needed in an the area. They'll advise you on how to improve ecosystem resilience, but they won't tell you the intervention you must take. Right tree, right place. How often do we hear this? But what does it mean to our national forest? To answer this question, you need to answer, what does a woodland or a national forest mean to you? Is it a continuous closed canopy forest running across Wales? It is, a, is it a resilient ecosystem, including a mosaic of complementary habitats that reflect the local landscape? Is there a place for productive forestry? Is there a place for people? Indeed, a woodland is defined as land where the ecological condition is or will be strongly influenced by tree canopy. Technically, it is land with trees where the mature trees could cover more than 20% of the area. We are excited to see what the National Forest Engagement Process delivers and area statements will be there to support national forest activities, whatever they are, with a focus on shared outcomes. If I had more time, I would like to share in detail with you the South Central Area Statement aims to recognise our shared value in the natural environment and how we can maximise the multiple benefits of the natural environment to well-being and economic prosperity alongside its intrinsic worth whilst maintaining ecosystem resilience. How we want to do this through equitable partnerships, giving a voice to and opening doors for partners. And we want to do this through new ways of working, putting the local environment at the heart of decision making. So I'll leave you with this. There is no doubt that area statements provide the framework to achieve the vision of our national forest and ensure that it is at the heart of decision making. And I can see that as this project evolves, area statements will also evolve as a result. So what is our national forest to me? It's the woodland on my doorstep. To where my dad took me. What was where I take my kids? What's yours? Nice, very nice. Thank you very much, Jeff, for that pre-recorded presentation. And yes, I remember as a child going to the woods as well and playing all day. And my mother never knew where I was from one day to the next. But absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. And we'll be seeing Jeff at the panel Q and A later on this morning. I think it's just before midday. And the Yola Williams video you saw earlier on will be actually shown in its entirety later on this morning to uh, finish off the morning session and this afternoon as well. And as I alluded to earlier on, there is information, of course, about all our speakers, including Jeff, from presentations on the event box lobby page. Uh, again, the Q&A session, people have been asking about the Q&A sessions. Can they access them? You will be able to. Not quite yet. They take a while to, to upload. So please bear with us at least for uh, a couple of days. Okay, right there. Nessa, we have Professor Richard Lucas, Sir uh, Cymru Chair, Aberystwyth University. He currently leads the Living Wales Project, which is facilitating the development of national land cover mapping and monitoring in Wales. His presentation is entitled Living Wales, a contribution to the national forest. Vehi, Professor Richard Lucas. Thank you very much and uh, I presume my video, yeah, my slides are coming up now. So Living Wales was basically developed to provide um, satellite based uh, mapping and monitoring of the land cover uh, across Wales, but it's very much linking to international projects as well. So next slide, please. So using a a uh, combination of Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 and going back in time with Landsat, we have constructed land cover maps for Wales. And these are constructed from what we call environmental descriptors that include in relation to forests, uh, canopy cover, canopy height, uh, leaf type, phenology, number of layers. And, and then these can be further described 
using, for example, um, biomass or dominant plant species or co-dominant. So with their maps available online at wales.livingearth.online um, for 217, 218 and 219. If you go to the next slide, please. These uh, are some of the examples of how you can construct a forest. So we can describe it in terms of it's woody. Um, it has is either broadleaved or deciduous. Uh, we can have a canopy cover of this and a biomass of, of this amount, say, you know, 100 to 120 tons per hectare. And so every pixel um, can, uh, in Wales at 10 meter combines that information, uh, these environmental descriptors to give you a, 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 a legend or a cap, uh, that says what the forest is, is about. If you go to the next slide, please. So this is an example of the national forest, the W forest, the proposed area. And here we can see then how the, the level of detail that these maps provide. And you can disaggregate those into these different components uh, and uh, say like canopy cover and life form. And you can see then um, what the current status is. And the idea is to be building this up on an annual basis and to go back to 1984. Go to the next slide as well, please. So forests can be described in multiple ways. And this is an example from the Wye Valley, which where I grew up actually in Whitebrook. And um, you can see the, the level of detail is very, it's actually very close canopy deciduous forest there um, with a high biomass, but we can describe it um, with lots of different satellites as they come on board. So for example, um, we've got future radar coming in, um, spaceborne LIDAR and so on. And that gives you a lot more information on the forest Plus there's planet scope data, uh, which provides you much more detailed information such as dominant species canopy cover and, and, and uh, health metrics as well. And the new national LIDAR um, coverage for whales uh, will also provide uh, measures of canopy height, um, leaf type, because you actually don't see very much the, the, the broadleaf forests because it's a leaf off coverage, but it gives you a lot of information on the canopy cover um, of the coniferous forest, but also where the, um, the rhododendron might be and gorse and holly and so on. So it does provide a lot of new information which can be integrated directly into living whales. So these are additional descriptors that we can use to describe the current state of the forest. You go to the next slide, please. So we have the three maps currently and more maps have been generated. And we also have a, an automated um, change detection system which compares all those variables in multiple ways. So there's literally hundreds of thousands of comparisons that go through and it will define, for example, clear cuts based on evidence. So it looks at the impacts and it looks at the pressures that lead to those impacts. And the, uh, these are available on the Living Wales website, but there'll be a lot more coming up where you have effectively uh, alerts of change uh, in the short to long term. So in that sense, you can start to monitor what's happening to your forest, whether it's been cleared, whether it's been regrowing and the effect of climate and disease. The next slide. So what we can also do then is if we can um, look at these descriptors over 30 to 40 years of the satellite record, and from these environmental descriptors and bring those together, we can also then, if we predict or decide what we want the forest to look like, we can create a land cover map, say for 2050 or 2030. We can either state what our plan would be and say, we want this, so we want this biomass, this dominant species, this canopy cover or this stratification of layers. And we can map that you know, very quickly. Um, and then you can look at the difference between what you've got now and what you would like to have, and you can put up different scenarios of what you'd like to have, and then you can work towards, you know, what collectively work towards a common goal. And I think this is very beneficial um, for the National Forest. So um, it, is a, it is an interesting capacity, and, and uh, if I go to the next um, slide as well, so you can monitor progress towards your goals, and you can also, on the Living Wells website under themes, you've also put together the sort of the, the reference and modified ecosystems in Wales, what were where they would naturally be. And, and so have a look at that website because it gives goes through the whole list of all the ecosystems and provides a bit of a description and tells people what the forest could be like 
into the future as well as other habitats. So this balance of all of these together. Next slide, please, as well. And finally, we've also got a mobile app called EarthTrack, which directly supports and validates the land cover transportations and that all the data are free and near real time and live. And this allows you to pick up the land cover, but also the change based on these impacts and pressures. And that's going to be um, advanced considerably. So we can look at like wind throw, um, ash dieback and so on. So that is really directly supporting the satellite information also. Um, so that's available and, and do look at the Living Wales website for information there. But what we can do there is to provide some capacity for monitoring from satellite progress towards your goals. And the final slide, please. And what I'd like to do is thank you and all the multiple contributors in Wales, the wider UK and internationally, because it's very much linking to a lot of countries around the world and bringing the capability into Wales. Thank you. Thank you so much to Professor Lucas. Again, we look forward to your contribution uh, to the panel later on, which will be just before midday, hopefully. Right, Emily Mlan, Oskani, Ir Ola, and Seath will move swiftly on to the third showcase. Now, Christine Wheeler, Deputy Director, Climate Change and Energy Efficiency at Welsh Government, joined Welsh Government in 2019 from the Ministry of Defence. She currently leads the climate change and energy efficiency team. And this is a pre-recorded presentation that he saw from Christine Wheeler. Hello, Bob. Uh, my name is Chris Wheeler. I work for the Welsh Government, where I lead on um, climate change and energy efficiency. And I'm joining you today to give a short presentation about the climate emergency. To start with, I thought it might be helpful to lay out a bit of a timeline which sets out uh, where we've come from as well as where we're going. So where we've come from? Well, in uh, 2016, the Environment Act Wales placed an obligation on Welsh ministers to ensure the net Welsh emissions account was at least 80% lower than the baseline. And for most uh, uh, gases, that's 1990, but not all. Um, that 80% figure was then set in law uh, towards the back end of 2018 um, and not long after in March 2019 the Welsh Government published Prosperity for All a Low Carbon Wales that set out how we were going to achieve that 80% target. Of course in April 2019 the Welsh Government then declared a climate emergency and was one of the first parliaments in the world to do so and um, in May 2019 it was a busy old year the then called UK Committee on Climate Change this is they've since rebranded um, gave us some advice and that advice said that 80% uh, was no longer the, the sort of top of ambition um, and that Wales was was capable of reaching a 95% reduction against the baseline um, in its greenhouse gas emissions. Wales accepted that advice um, and requested in December for further advice from them. Uh, how do we get that, to that 95% figure and could we go beyond it? Wales was keen to even then to push for towards net zero. Well in between that time December 2019 and now uh, quite a lot of things have happened not least um, the Covid pandemic and uh, Brexit but in December last year the CCC came out with more advice and um, they confirmed net zero was realistic and credible for Wales and I'll talk about that in a moment um, and they also confirmed that we were on track for our first carbon budget uh, which is kind of it was closed in 2020 because the data we get is two years behind we only know how well we've done up to 2018 and so far so good. Um, off the back of that advice in December, the Cabinet met in January and they agreed to follow that advice and the regulations to change the statutory Welsh targets and I laid in the Senate waiting for debate uh, in the middle of March. So it's all very exciting um, and there's quite a lot to come, not least as we look towards November. Uh, and November is quite important uh, for a range of reasons. The top two reasons are that in November we see COP26, and I'll come back to that again a bit later, the big UN climate change conference. And we also see Wales publish its low carbon delivery plan or its net zero carbon delivery plan, which explains how we're going to get to that target over the next five years. So I want to talk a little bit more about uh, that CCC advice, um, a, bit, a little bit about the role of agriculture, forestry, trees, um, and the role they might play in getting Wales to net zero. Um, just to give a bit more context around what that means. The CCC advice was based on a variety of pathways 
Um, so they modelled five different pathways, which all took account of different levels of societal and behavioural change, as well as different uh, levels of innovation and new technology. Uh, there are pathways called headwinds, which sort of made slightly less ambitious assumptions about those. And there's a pathway called tailwinds, which made pretty ambitious assumptions about both of those, the societal and behavioural change, as well as innovation and tech. Now, in the middle of those sits the balanced pathway, and that's the pathway which uh, most of the figures I'm about to talk about fit. Uh, and that's the pathway which, under, which underpins the net zero advice which they gave to Wales, and which Wales has subsequently accepted. So, what are the numbers? Well, um, we used to have, uh, car so the emissions are split into carbon budgets, which are sort of five year chunks, as well as decadal targets. Um, as a carbon budget one was a five year chunk up to 2020. Um, carbon budget two is the five year chunk we just entered and it will finish in 2025. Previously, um, that carbon budget for that we're currently in, the one to 2025, was a 33% reduction against the baseline. That's going to go up 37%. But I think more importantly, and really signalling the extent of change you need to be in this decisive decade of action, is a target for 2030. Previously, that was 45%. Uh, we know, or if the if the Senate of the Agree, the Welsh Government regulations, that will be changed to 63%. So from 45 to 63 by 2030. Those uh, targets continue to get more ambitious until in 2050 we see 100% uh, reduction against the baseline and net zero target. And that's really exciting for Wales, but it does come with lots and lots to do. Why did we get to net zero now and we didn't before? Well, there's a bunch of quite technical reasons, we've probably got time to cover today, but some of them, most of them are to do with industry, uh, how you can go slightly further, slightly faster, and some assumptions around carbon capture which is how you get around decarbonising the industry when you catch the carbon that's emitted uh, before it goes into the atmosphere. And the big thing to take away from this pathway is, as I said, the 2020s is the decade of action. It's all front loaded um, and it's all for us to do now. It's a big UK government role here, um, but forestry is one of the few areas where the, most of the actions don't sit with the UK government. They sit in Wales, they sit with the Welsh government, they sit with um, Welsh uh, landowners. Um, and Welsh people. So that's really exciting as well. The balanced pathway um, sets out a range of things that need to happen in order for us to get to net zero. And it's important to note the CCC did model five different pathways and this is just an example one. The balanced pathway just gives us a, a handrail. We don't have to follow every single component but if we did then we'd see new, um, no new fossil fueled cars after about 2032, no new gas boilers in our houses after 2033. And we would see several thousand hectares uh, of trees planted a year um, in all scenarios, um, but around sort of seven and a half thousand by the mid 2030s, which is a, a big step up from where we are today. Um, with time running out, I want to just look forward. So as we work out for Wales, whether and how we, we follow that balanced pathway, what that means in the next five years, the next 10 years, and over the next 30 years, um, you should look ahead to November when we're gonna publish that next low carbon plan. The next low carbon plan will describe how Wales is going to meet its next carbon budget, that five year period, 2021 to 2025, and we'll be launching that at COP26. COP26 is that big UN climate conference, it's going to be held in Glasgow and we're hoping to hold shadow events here uh, called COP Cymru, but um, more to follow on that as we develop our plans. It's a big year globally for climate with um, the G7, the UK has presidency all focusing on uh, climate, but also when we think about uh, Biden in America, uh, some of the Chinese commitments and more broadly across the world. So a really big year for climate uh, and really big year for forestry, I think, and the role that trees and plants and forests can play within capturing carbon, but also in offering nature-based solutions uh, and helping with climate adaptation, uh, where it has a key role. I'm afraid that's all I've got time for today, but I'm really excited to be part of this forestry event uh, and really hope that you all enjoy the rest of the session. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person today. Best wishes. See you. Yeah, Christine, yeah, you come on, Castle Carrick Kenan to you and an addition Vendi Gedigoth goes. Okay. Well, three valuable showcases there. Um, Professor Lucas and Jeff, as well as John Travis, who very, very bravely stepped in this morning. Thank you, John. Will be on the panel for your questions later on this morning. Uh, hopefully, as I said, just before midday. And as I mentioned, all the showcases, biogs and the content 
uh, for the Q&A, as well as any photos, etc., are available to peruse at your leisure in the event box. So again, try and make the most of it. I'm hoping after seeing those shake showcases, you'll have some questions ready for the panelists. So don't forget to jot them down on the Q&A. There's a couple of come in already, and obviously we will be keeping an eye on them, and Adam and I will be collating them later on for the panel. And again, don't forget to tweet. It's, uh, I always forget this hashtag, hashtag National Forest Wales, hashtag Coidwig, Kenneth Lethal, Cymru, and Gamalai Gothgos. Fechyn a fe, am a tro, am ser am goffi bach. Fe, meddwl, let's stop for a quick tea or coffee, but don't go. After the break, we'll be going into part two of the session, and it's your opportunity to have your say. So yes, by all means, have a coffee. Then please go back to the lobby in event box, look for and go into breakout conversations, and session, scursio, and a Gamalaig, Click onto the appropriate link. Now it's the one and the 12th of March, of course, that says 10.50 and now, and then click on that and then click on the green box that will appear on the left-hand side. And that says, click here to join the Zoom meeting. So again, go back to the lobby, breakout conversations, the appropriate link, the one that says uh, 12th of March, 10.50, click on that and then click on the green box that'll appear on the left that says, click here to join the Zoom meeting. And we'll reconvene there in 10 minutes. During the break, you will be able to watch some more films that'll be on a loop in the lobby at the bottom of the page. Um, so please check those films out. Okay, it's now it's now quarter to 11, I think, by my watch. Let's be back here, please, by five to 11. So 10 minutes, I'm back at five to 11 when you've done all that clicking and linking. Okay, Diolch Mario Okay, right, cross and all at Holly Agatheb Nessa. So this is the third and the final part of the session today, of course. And as I said, it's the uh, it's the what is it, the, the fifth of six sessions. Um, we've had some lively discussions, certainly on Wednesday and Thursday and this morning, some great comments, some great opinions. So now it's time for you, hopefully, to ask the these questions. I have a couple, a couple only. So if you Want to have your questions um, asked as it were, please put them in the Q&A or the chat. I'll keep an eye on both. Now, we've already met our panel. So if it's OK, well, we met two of them at least. If it's OK, can I ask, ask all three of you, please, to quickly introduce yourselves again? Uh, we'll start with uh, John. John, are you there? Can you just quickly introduce yourself again? Hello, uh, John Travis, Head of Forest Reform at the Welsh Government. OK, Professor Richard Lucas. Richard Lucas, at Bridge of the University, part of the Living Wales Project. Excellent, thank you. And we had Jeff's presentation, but we didn't see him. So, Jeff. Hi, uh, Jeff Hobbs. Uh, I'm a People and Places Officer in Natural Resources Wales. Good. OK, right. So we've got about 20 minutes ish for this. So uh, at the moment, I want to get a couple of questions. So um, please don't be shy. Let's ask these questions. Uh, any comments you'd like to put on the chat or the Q&A. But we do have uh, Tom Jenkins, who very kindly um, put something in the chat earlier on. Tom, you're saying that there needs, right, okay, this is probably for John then. Uh, or is it actually Mr. Hobbs? Yeah, Jeff, maybe. There surely needs to be more than a simple aspiration that all parts of the National Forest will meet the requirements set out in the UK Forest Standard. It's sort of a question, but sort of a statement as well. So, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, I think it might have actually been better for John on that one. Oh, okay, but I, fair enough, right. Well, Ed, yeah. Uh, by all means, by all means, contribute first of all. We go to we'll go to John. Okay. Yeah. I think I think it's a it's a way of saying that they're going to be good quality spaces for whatever the they're designed for. So whether they they going in for the benefit of people, they should be designed well for people. And if they're for you know for ecosystem resilience, they need to meet a certain standard for that as well. Yeah. I think that that's I, the aspiration for that. I think Tom uh, didn't like this word aspiration. It needs to be more than an aspiration. So John, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, so. The UK forestry standard is our our sort of UK wide standard of how to do good sustainable forestry, uh, which has been developed with sort of foresters and academics and environmental experts, and is actually currently undergoing a review to make sure it stays up to date with the latest evidence. Um, and we um, we in Welsh government, I mean, we we want all woodlands to be managed in line with the UKFS, but certainly any woodland supported by Welsh government is required to be managed. Um, in line with the UK forestry standards. So um, yeah, I think um, um, one of our key outcomes for the national forest is, is the woodlands that are well managed and um, um, resilient and um, the UK forestry standard is an important part of that. Okay. 
John, I'm going to stay with you if you don't mind. Um, and I know this is a little bit of a, a, a maybe, well, touchy subject, maybe, but maybe not. This is a very long term uh, forever project, basically. It will need cross party support to ensure continuity. Uh, Graham is asking, where are we with that? Yeah, I mean, we, we actually talked about that bit in our, our breakout group as well. Um, I mean, um, I'm a civil servant, so I work for the government of the day um, and current ministers. But I think ministers are, are very aware that this has to be a, a sort of a long term project that will we want to start bringing the benefits now. But the, the full benefits will come in decades and decades uh, time. So um, absolutely will require kind of um, um, widespread support. Um, and, and I was saying in the breakout group, that's actually, you know, that's common to a lot of the um, environmental issues we're dealing with. If you look at something like climate change, and we have to, as Chris's session talked about earlier, we have to put in plans for sort of um, reducing emissions over over 30, 40 years. Um, and that requires, um, you know, a long term legislative framework and um, um, uh, long-term support and I think on a lot of these environmental issues there is um, like addressing climate change there is broad support from people across Wales and, and from um, uh, across the political spectrum as well. Okay good thank you John uh, and thank you Laura you put a, a, a Woodland Trust link in the the chat button as well. Okay let's have a question from Dr Ken Addison we've got a couple from uh, Dr Addison so um, we talked about this yesterday see the the hub approach uh, the hub approach would make use of the area statements and give them purpose with respect to their universal identification of woodland and biodiversity themes. So why not opt for this now, the hub approach? Who would like to tackle that? I'd Jeff? like to start, Chris. Or, or Jeff might be able to say something specific about um, area statements. Sure, you start, then we'll go to Jeff and maybe uh, Richard, if you want to chip in, but let John, let's start with I mean, you. I mean, I think, I think um, because we talked about three approaches in, in my introduction right at the start, um, and it's really helpful to get feedback on what people think are the best, so thank you for that. Um, I think whichever approach we, we, we take to the National Forest, we would, we would definitely look to use um, area statements, and, and on all the other data, you know, we spent a lot of time looking at the, the, the sort of um, uh, data and things that people have produced about woodlands in Wales. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly that sort of hub and spoke approach is probably more flexible and lends itself best to um, uh, taking full advantage of various statements. Um, but Jeff might be well placed to sort of say something about, about how we can use area statements in, in yeah. sort of, um, designing the National Forest. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, John. Um, I think it depends what the, the hubs are. Are they hubs for people and what people well-being? Are they hubs in terms of uh, ecosystem resilience? So are they hubs around some of the protected sites, triple SIs, special areas of conservation? Um, I think from an area perspective, that was more appropriate where you can look for those linkages. In my talk, I talked about habitat networks. The habitat networks would make good spokes and talk about the resilience. And in South Central, you've got, you know, quite a large area of woodland above Cardiff where there's a lot of, um, uh, it's, it's, there are really important uh, protected sites there, but also really well used by people and that itself would make a really good hub. So um, yeah, I, I guess it depends what people want in terms of a hub in that sense. Yeah, well, we, we'll stay with urban areas if you don't mind then. Um, Jeffrey is asking quite a simple question really. Can we put more urban trees to replace to replace the ones lost? I mean, that's probably, you know, part of the plan, I presume, is it? John? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, um, yes, and um, certainly um, urban urban trees and urban woodlands are part of the plan, and, and one of the things that we're, we've tried to start this year is, is um, looking at um, uh, supporting people to develop community woodlands, a lot of which are in urban areas, so yes, that's, that's an important part of what we're looking at. Okay, let's try and get a, a question for Richard, because I know um, he needs to move on. Yeah, so... I, can, I, I can actually answer on the urban one. It's an interesting aspect there is because when you look around the world and where values of you know, urban properties are the biggest is where the trees are. And I think that's actually quite a useful way to sort of you know, encourage urban growth because you know, or tree planting because it, it adds value to, to areas and so on. So I just want to put that forward as, a, as, an, as an interesting way. Okay. Um, let's talk finance then, guys. Um, Sylvia is asking a question. What financial help is available to 
uh, or sorry, what financial help is available for private ancient forests of less than five acres in Wales, please, in terms of decaying trees and replacing them, not for harvest, just to preserve what we've already got. So what financial help is actually available? Anybody? I'm putting you on the spot. There's only three of them, so I'm to I don't know about the financial help, but I, what, I, what I do see is that a lot of trees, you know, a lot of these larger trees because of, you know, the increased storms and so on like that, they are falling, you know, they're, they're, they're being lost. And, and there needs to be sort of a way of, you know, um, knowing where they are, protecting them, but also planning for that, them to be retained in the landscape into the future because they're few and far between, they're there, but they're really important. And I, I think one of the things about these, ancient trees is that you know they're important to say in, in for hollows which i don't think is really realized so in australia where we've been working a lot the hollows is really important but i think it is in the uk because you need nest boxes in you know in smaller trees so in effect allowing that development of hollows and niches for, for wildlife and those old trees and the ancient forest do that and and i think that when you're planning a your future forest it's going to take a long time to get to that stage you know literally decades and and i think that's um, so if there is finances to to support what we keep what we've got but also you know promote that, that ecological importance of them the future would be really good great thank you Chris, do, you me, do you want me to say something on that too yes the, by all means um, I, I can come, we'd come to jeff again and the next question is for jeff as well so yes john um i mean i, I think um I, I i echo what richard says about it you know we sometimes talk a lot about planting new trees but but um managing existing woodlands and keeping them in good condition is is um just as important um and um um one of the things i mean one of the what the support looks like depends a bit on what the woodland is like but one of the, the things that we are um are looking to do this year is um open a scheme for for woodlands who want to be um or woodland owners who want to have their woodlands as part of the national forest and want to um, bring them up to national forest standard, um, which will be an opportunity for people to um, um, get funding to, to, to sort of improve their woodlands. And identifying those those trees is, is quite an interesting part because you're connecting, the, you're making this network, but actually, you know, you can see where those are. I know they are mapped to a certain extent, but, you know, individual large trees and connecting those and seeing how that in the future, because they are, really important components and, and also they tell people what's possible if you go and find a three meter diameter tree people will, a lot of people say it will only get to like you know half a meter whereas actually you know they're massive some of these things and then they're um they're really good sort of uh educational tools about what's possible and okay. what you should um, be aspiring to thank you Richard. hang on jeff a second laura is saying um in koi kadu we do have advisors who can come out and provide advice and she's put a link on there and thank you tom again uh, you're asking these big complex questions this morning so thank you so much uh, but as i said the, the the chat is being recorded as well and they will be available in the next few days so okay jeff let's go to you then to to for that question yeah yeah so i think that question was about um woodland management and it uh, it's really good to hear john say and, and the national forest being not just about woodland creation but talking about how we manage and restore the existing woodland that's something that we found in conversations with others that they they find really difficult so yeah that's really it's really positive from here statement point of view there okay i'm going to keep with you i'm going to stay with you as well jeff if you don't mind uh alana or laney sorry excuse me i don't know exactly how to say your name uh, what are we? To what extent, given its wide remit, will NRW be able to integrate its forestry priorities with the need to increase the use of natural flood prevention methods in problem catchments? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, well, NRW, I think at the moment, the forest resource plans, they do try to take that into account a little bit more um, as part of the flood reviews uh, I know my forestry colleagues are looking at that and um, really put in natural flood management higher up the uh, agenda uh, yeah I think yeah it's, it's happening uh, okay excellent uh, in the same vein in a way something else uh, where are we where are we Andrew maybe this is for John I, I'm sure you're thinking about everything but obviously Andrew's asking my hope is that the national forest will start the green revolution in Wales it's green is greener transport also part of the plan? Yeah, um, not my personal area of expertise, but certainly, I mean, um, it, uh, across the Welsh Government as a whole, um, um, sort of greener transport um, is part of the plan. Um, and actually, 
you know, um, uh, one of our earlier presentations talked about the Committee on Climate Change's recommendations for getting um, Wales to, to net zero emissions and transport's an important um, part of that. And a lot of thinking is going on in Welsh Government at the moment, particularly um, about um, some of the changes in transport that might have happened as a result of, of, of the um, coronavirus pandemic and how as we, we sort of recover from that, um, we can make sure the recovery is a green recovery um, and not necessarily going back to exactly what we were like um, um, before the pandemic. Okay, uh, there's a lot of obviously uh, talk of connectivity. Um, Richard, gonna come to you, I know you have to go in a couple of minutes. Uh, Harv Lakeshead is asking, in terms of connectivity, what do the panelists think are the biggest priorities, or maybe one big priority for creating connected woodland? Is hedges and edges an opportunity, she asks? And if so, how do we therefore define, oh no, how do we define what a forest is? There's lots of talk of this, isn't it? What is a forest? What is a wood? You're, you're smiling wryly there, Richard. You've obviously heard this before. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, like there are definitions of forest and it's normal. I know, tell me if I'm wrong, but the one we use is more than 20% canopy cover and more than two meters in height and it's potential to do that. And I think that's the UN um, definition, but it varies around the world and so on. It could be 10%. So that that's sort of the official definition. So it's, it's worth using that in our system, for example, living in Wales, we use that definition. But um it's hedgerows are really important parts of that and 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 of that connectivity and I think a lot of them are support trees and there's quite a lot that don't and there's a lot big capacity for connectivity through hedgerow networks and so on and uh, clearly they're not defined as a forest but they they're really vital for things like bats and just for you know for, for all sorts of reasons a lot of them are you know I've got ancient trees in them as well so you know so I think the whole the whole framework needs to be put in place and I'd highlight also that there will be with the national lidar I think there will be some really nice new information on on hedgerows extent and condition but and, and also I know keep wells tidy and you know have been working on hedgerows as well um so the long forest so definitely consider them and that connectivity is really important That's okay I, let me stick with you for two seconds then Gwen Hian is asking well she's wondering about the visual impact of large areas of forestry woodland on the landscape will they be surrounded or disguised by deciduous more biodiverse woodland and is there a plan for what sort of proportion of working forestry to biodiverse woodland that's a big question isn't it but i think she's wondering and quite maybe worried about the visual impact first of all what about that i think one of the things that you know looking at um area statements and so on when you're looking at areas of forest it's also what what's in those forests and what they're comprised of and so when you're looking at just areas it's, it's the composition of the forest the structure and the floristics as well um and can I ask that question again? Just ask me to repeat that question again. There, with the look, is the, is the visualization of it, isn't it? Yeah. So if you could, with with that living Wales approach, we could say, what would you like? And if we can say, well, I'd like to have a forest that's this biomass, this this species, and so on. You can sort of map it ahead of time what you'd like, but actually then what's achievable and what you could model to look. You know, what what are the what are the barriers to that? So the nice thing about living Wales is actually you can you can interplay with these and, and play with what the different landscapes under different scenarios of land use or climate and so on. And, and I think that's a very useful way forward because for myself, I'd like to know what would that what would that look like and what would be the impact on biodiversity. So you could say, well, if I want a forest of this this biomass is cover and so on, what would I get? Will I get woodpeckers, you know, after ten years and owls after thirty and so on? So it's it's, it's quite nice to bring that structural. Well, it's essential actually to bring that sort of that compositional information in to allow people to visualise to see the benefits under different scenarios of carbon biodiversity ecosystem services. Uh, I think that's a really good way and make it open. And that's what we're trying to do in Living Wales, for example, but you know, working with everybody to do that. I, I think that's a good way forward. Okay, thank you very much, Richard. And thanks again to Abby and Tom and Kirsten. You're putting all kinds of information on links in the chat. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And Laura as well. Um, John, I'm going to come to you next quickly. Uh, Tim Bennett, following on from the financial support question, I know we talked about the financial support. Will there be more support for active management the current schemes are very planting focused, whereas older ones used to help with infrastructure and ongoing maintenance. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I, sort of, I guess that follows up from what I was saying earlier. Yeah, that's something that we're very aware of. And um, as I say, um, I, I mean, there's two things I'd highlight um, specifically. Um, 
um, is, is that we will be providing funding for um, um, bringing woodlands up to national forest standards. And um, I'd encourage people to think about, about you know, how they can take advantage of that when we give, um, publish details of the scheme later this year. And the other area where we're looking at that a lot at the moment is um, um, we heard earlier in the week about um, Wales's plans for um, a new um, system of support for, for farmers um, as we have left the EU now um, with a sustainable farming scheme. And one of the areas we're looking at with that is how we can use that um, that scheme to um, provide support for um, uh, improved management of woodlands on farms. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna to come to you in a second uh, with one final question. I'm gonna ask you really, what excites you basically as an individual most about this amazing plan, about this amazing um, National Forest for Wales? But I am gonna say, uh, right, Jennifer Knight is saying the National Forest for Wales will need to expand on the traditional idea of forest and the UN definition. The Forest of Wales would be by nature need to be very diverse, including urban, community woodlands, etc., as well as traditional forest. It's one of the most interesting aspects about it, she says. So uh, would you agree with that, guys? Just to answer to that as well, I, I totally agree with that. I think you have these standard definitions which we use for sort of mapping and assessment, but there's a lot more, you know, there's lots more about forests, and I think you need to, in developing the national forest, is, is make sure those are all brought in so that, you know, because you, you need to have this common agreement or, or thought about how it's going to go forward, and, and ignoring those sort of things is, is, is not the thing to do. I think you need to look at the things from actual mapping but also what people want to use them for you know like leisure you know that people who look at the forest as being a leisure you know uh, facility as well so yeah it, it, just making sure everybody's opinion is heard is important good okay thank you well do you know what we actually have run out of time so thank you very very much jeff richard and john thank you all for the questions uh, and the uh, comments in the chat and as i said it is actually being recorded now so as i said they will be available uh, at a later date not quite sure when but uh, give Adam time to upload everything and it will be available so thank you Richard I know you have to go thank you for joining us uh, Jeff and John Donali Becky ar gyfer well gyfer ar dyrnod yma diwedd y sesiwn diwch chi gyd wrth gwrs am y cyfriniadau ar cwestiynau diwch chi bawb sydd yn cymryd rhan eto mae wedi bod yn, uh, yn fywiog I think you'll agree it's been a very lively interesting morning uh, we have one more session this afternoon at one o'clock. We'll be focusing on the economy and the benefits of the National Forest for Wales, of course. So again, if you're unsure of the times, just go back to the event box main page and all the information is on that. Now, we do have an evaluation link. Adam, would you be so kind maybe as to share that? And I think James from Casbah is going to be sending everyone the link as well, just to get your opinion on how this has gone, how we've all handled it, as it were. And there we are, there's the link there. So let me just take that down. There we are, that's, that is the link. And as I said, uh, it, you will be emailed that link as well. So don't panic if you didn't see that. But the, the whole point of it is, is basically to ask your opinion how the three days have gone, how you think it's gone, um, have the right things been talked about, the panellists, the presenters, obviously, and that kind of thing. So that, that'd be wonderful if you could spend some time on that. Can any wind, any mini chware, vidjovach and Yolo Williams, stay with us just for a few more minutes. Before you go, we're going to play you this wonderful little video. We saw a little bit of it uh, at the beginning of today, of course. So presenter and activist Yolo Williams has this passionate message for us all. And I know Yolo, and he's very, very passionate about this thing. So let's let's start with the uh, Welsh one first, please. And then come like a wedding, a wedding sister. And I'll be the dullest Sam Goitwig. The Leon, good and natter, man on the higher end night. The Leon team law, and the Nick Nagar Goss, on the Gusselietic, and Gusselietic and Gurivia Keltai, a Quedla or Mabinoki. Coed wi goedd yn cyfoethogiau'n bywydau mewn cymaint o ffyrdd. Fydd coed wi genedlaethol Cymru yn cysylltu ein coetiroedd hynafol a newydd, yn dod â diwylliant ein gorffennol a'n presennol i fywyd i ddathlu Cymru fel gwlad wedi ei chyfoethogi gan ein coetiroedd. Dim plannu coed wi gyda'r cynllun, ond plannu syniad a'i wylio'n tyfu dros genedlaethau. Mae'r syniad fydd yn siapio ein gwytnwch fel cenedl yn y dyfodol, yn creu cryfder drwy gydbwysedd ac yn dylanwadu ein hamgylched, ein cynefin a'n bywydau yn 
ddiwylliannol yn economaidd ac yn gynaliadwy. Yn cynhyrchu ffyniant masnachol trwy greu ymwelwyr, diwydiant a swyddi. Byddwn yn adfer, gwella a chreu coetiroedd a chynefinoedd mewn ffordd gysylltiedig ar hyd a lled Cymru. Wrth gymryd yr agwedd y goeden iawn yn y lle iawn, ochr yn ochr a safonau a chanllawiau coedwigaeth y deyrnas unedig, bydd ein coedwig genedlaethol yn sefydlu tirweddau a chynefinoedd cryf, cynaliadwy, wedi gwreiddio'n gadarn i ymddiffyn ein gwlad mewn nifer o ffyrdd o effeithiau newid yr hyn sawdd i lifogydd. Mae ein coedwig genedlaethol yn ymwneud â mwy na choed yn unig. Mae'n ymwneud â chwarae rhan mewn tyfu a rhannu Cymru mewn dyfodol sy'n ddiw ac yn ffynu am genedlaethau i ddod. Eich coedwig genedlaethol chi ydy hon. Byddwch yn rhan o honi. There's something magical about forests. At one with nature, they're good for our soul. We feel not alone, not lost, but connected. Connected to our Celtic past and tales from the Mabinogion. Forests enrich our lives in so many ways. The National Forest for Wales will connect our ancient and the woodlands, bringing our past and present culture to life, celebrating Wales as a land enriched by our woodlands. The plan isn't simply to plant a forest, it's to plant an idea and watch it grow for generations. It's an idea that will shape our future resilience as a nation, creating strength through balance and influencing our environment, our habitats and our lives, culturally, economically and sustainably. We'll generate commercial prosperity by creating visitors, industry and jobs. We will restore, enhance and create woodlands and habitats in a connected way across the length and breadth of Wales. Taking a right tree, right place approach alongside UK forestry standards and guidelines, our national forest will establish strong, sustainable landscapes and habitats, firmly rooted to protect our country in a number of ways from climate change effects to flooding. National Forest is about more than just trees. It's about playing a part in growing and sharing a future Wales that's alive and thriving for generations to come. This is your National Forest. Be part of it. Your wonderful, lovely, lovely video. That's Jochichi Gil Vahi. Thanks to you all again. Hopefully, we might see some of you at the session this afternoon. The final one. So that's one o'clock, and it's uh, trees and the economy. Vahi. Diocha Galon in my third dome and health. Gwether Hid Deed. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully, we'll see you later on. And if not, have a lovely weekend. From Vahi.